Hello everyone and welcome to OST Live, a weekly broadcast on blockchain, branded tokens, and token economies built on OST. Simple Token, also known as OST, is a public blockchain platform that allows businesses such as uh, today's guest, Turiosity, to build their own token economy and branded tokens on OST blockchain technology. And with us today, we have the CEO and founder of uh, Turiosity, Alex Grant. Alex, welcome to OST Live. Thank you very much, Jose. It's a pleasure to, to talk to you today. So can you tell us uh, briefly a little bit about yourself and then uh, about your company, Turiosity? Yes, yeah, so um, I'm, the, I'm the founder of Turiosity. Um, my background was originally in, uh, in finance and then I, I ended up doing an MBA. And uh, after the MBA, I went to work in a, di in a digital startup in Rome. And uh, as, as I was in Rome, uh, I, I became aware of this uh, very fast growing segment of the travel industry, which is like uh, guided tours. Um, and I actually became a tour guide myself on, on, on the weekends because I had a history degree. So a, a friend of mine and myself actually set up our own tour company in Rome. Um, and over about two or three years, we actually saw a trend uh, from, the, from, the, from the bookings that we were getting and the requests that we were getting. And it turned out that people we're moving away from the kind of a cookie cutter tour with uh, loads of other people. And they're willing to spend a little bit more money for um, a customized private tour that was suited to their needs. Um, and I find this very interesting and then uh, created a platform to try and um, kind of help with this need that, that, that people had. And that was the beginnings of Curiosity, which was actually about four years ago. We're now, um, we're now operating in 52 cities. We have uh, over a thousand guides on the platform and uh, customers are able to um, uh, book a private tour in all those cities. We're about to start doing small group tours as well. And customers can actually customize uh, uh, like the tours on the platform as well, which is one of our USBs. Great, can you explain uh, how Curiosity works, uh, sort of the process for booking a tour? Is it sort of the Airbnb and Uber of tourism? Yeah, so that, that's a very good analogy. Okay, so um, it's, a, it's a mix of both of those, uh, of, of those concepts, really. And we iterated our way to, uh, to the model we have now. So essentially, what we do is we go out and curate uh, the, the 10, 10, 10 to 15 of, of the best kind of experiences to do in, in, in every city. And we create the content, we create the route, and then we go and get the best guides in those cities as well. And those guides actually work with us on a collaborative basis to create these itineraries and tours. So, you know, they, they know a lot more than we do about the cities and stuff. So then a customer comes to our site, they can, uh, they, they plug in their interests. We give them back some options. Uh, they basically book the tour that they're interested in, or they kind of create their own tour with us. And once it gets booked in, uh, this booking gets kind of uh, like, it gets farmed out like Uber. Uh, to all these tour guides who have basically a mobile dashboard and the, the first like maybe three or four will get back and then the system chooses the one that is the best match so it's a uh, is it do you guys hand select uh, which tour guides uh, so is it sort of a, a hiring process or is it more uh, can anybody in a local city become a tour guide a uh, very good question so like the tour guide sector is it's very interesting very fragmented okay so in certain cities, to be a tour guide, you have to have a license. Um, I'll give an, like, give an example of this. In London, uh, there are seven different licenses you can have. Okay? So there is the, there's the very top one, which is Blue Badge, and they're the only guys you can tour within certain museums. And then you have like, uh, different guide licenses for every kind of area. You also are allowed to give tours in London, as anybody can give a tour. I could give you a tour in London. In Rome, you have to have a license, and it's illegal to give tours on the streets. So, so, so you have this very, uh, very difficult kind of minefield to, to deal with. But we actually, up until now, we've been working with licensed tour guides all around the world because they do have this kind of inbuilt quality um, and it's much easier to vet them. But we are starting to move into the more peer-to-peer -peer market where anybody can create an experience and then we can kind of help them get, we can help that person to try and get um, kind of bookings. And uh, Airbnb, for example, have been, uh, you know, their, like their next move after their big play in, in accommodation. And um, if you can imagine, they, they, they could have done anything. You know, they, they had the resources, they have the, the user base, the community, and they decided to do tours and experiences. And 
they, they've started off with the peer-to-peer -peer model because that's kind of uh, part of their brand, so that's part of their messaging. Um, but they're going to start getting into professional tour guides and kind of more mainstream tours as well. Um, so that's kind of that's that's kind of the model, yeah. Great, that's uh, that's interesting to see. I, I have seen that Airbnb does have some sort of experience section now, uh, as it didn't in the past. Uh, so can you tell us about? Um, so, so I guess we mentioned Airbnb. What what's the current model of of uh, you know how does tourism work with other businesses? Um, and can you tell us a little bit about the tourism industry? Uh, well, like the, the tourism industry is, it's either the first, it's, it's the second largest industry in the world. Um, it's almost a trillion, a trillion dollars a year. Um, and it's growing like double digits every year. Uh, like the Chinese market is, is fueling this as well. Um, and within the tourism uh, industry, you have lots of different segments. So you have, you know, hotels, which is the largest. You've got uh, flights, which is very big. You've got cruise, you've got uh, transport. You've got like transfers, uh, car rental, and tours and activities was, is, is the last kind of, uh, let, let's say, bastion to be kind of aggregated online. Um, and it's actually growing. It's the fastest growing sector of, of travel. So it's very interesting. And there's also been a shift in people's spending. And people are now looking for more experiential uh, trips away. People want to get under the skin of a city. People like it's, it's, it's like the millennial phase that we're in these days, you know, people like ownership isn't, isn't as important anymore. People are more about, you know, experiencing different things. And this is all feeding into the sector that we're in. So there's been a massive boom in the sector over the last couple of years. And that's, that's been shown with, you know, Airbnb coming to the market, but Expedia and all these guys are all piling in as well. So it's an exciting time to be in the sector, but it's, it's very competitive. Great. Has it sort of increased in competition over the past four years that you've been working uh, with Curiosity? So my, my imagination of, uh, you know, tourism at first is uh, going to the city and you sort of see people there handing out uh, tourism guides. Uh, has it shifted more to a, a pre-planned model where people are booking online to get uh, more curated experiences, sort of like what Airbnb is doing, trying to get people to book beforehand? Yeah, so uh, that, that's, that, that's an excellent question. Um, you know, people, 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 most people don't understand that you can actually, you can book this stuff online. People assume you have to turn up and in the hotel, you get a flyer and then you can book it last minute. So there's lots of companies that are doing that kind of last minute booking. You know, they have apps um, and they're doing lots of kind of partnerships in, in destination. Um, but there is, but there's a huge market for like a pre-planned and we have, we have focused on the pre plan a lot. So because of our customization. So typically most of our clients currently are from the US, but like we're, we're trying to diversify with uh, inbound Asia uh, into Europe at the moment, but US customers and if they're families, they want to maximize their trip. So they will pre-plan everything and they will, they will want everything done for them. And they, they want to have an itinerary from at nine o'clock to six o'clock every day. And that, that all has to be done in advance. And uh, Europe uh, in particular, um, it's very busy, like, you know, Rome gets like 25 million people a year, London gets something similar. And if you, if you don't book in advance some of this stuff, you're like, there's a risk that you won't, you won't be able to get a ticket for the Louvre or, or, or for the Vatican. So th th that plays a lot into our hands um, for planning customized trips. But um, a lot of people will book last minute on mobile, which is where we're trying to get to next, which is kind of like on demand booking a guide kind of a uh, um, journey, that, journey that they're on at the moment. And uh, so Curiosity is going to implement uh, a token economy to the platform. Can you tell us a little bit about um, how you guys got involved with blockchain and what you guys are going to do with blockchain at Curiosity? Uh, yes. Yeah, so um, we, we have actually kind of been looking for solutions um, that are blockchain answers for, for, for quite a while. So like we, we feel that, you know, although we are a platform in the middle, um, what we do is kind of organize data, we organize uh, distribution channels and stuff, but the guides are actually the backbone of the company. You know what I mean? The guides are the people that create these great experiences for people. And ultimately, you know, they, they, they like, you know, we are only creating value if they're creating value. So we wanted to try and create a kind of an equity pool for the guides a few years ago. And um, it's actually quite funny because Airbnb is literally right now trying to do this for their hosts. And, and we looked at it, but like, you know, we're a startup, uh, the, the resources weren't there and it was, it was far too much of an undertaking. 
So, th so then we park that, uh, but we also in the back of our heads. We also have a lot of challenges in paying guides. If I was to give you an, an example, um, you know, it, first of all, it costs us money every time we, we transfer money uh, to a guide, which hits into our, in, into our kind of commission. Um, also, like in some places, it's very difficult to pay the guides. In Cuba, for example, we can't pay the guides at all. Like we actually, you can't, you can't send money into Cuba, into a bank account. We have to go through a, a company uh, via Estonia. Um, uh, our guides in Morocco, uh, typically these guys want to be paid by, via Western Union. Um, so you, you can see here a bit of a trend that like, you know, it's like if we're trying to do a volume play here, like, you know, all these different inconsistencies in how we pay guides. So we actually thought of maybe paying them in Bitcoin and that was about three or four years ago. Um, uh, whenever Bitcoin was still, you know, in its, um, like it was still not really as mainstream as it is today. And, um, and obviously then I started reading a blockchain, but you know, it took me a long time to get my head around, uh, you know, blockchain and what was going on and stuff. And, um, the, the idea of decentralizing the company was very interesting, but you know, we, we weren't going to jump in and just change our whole business model. It just, it was, it would have been crazy. And I believe that anybody that kind of does that, it, um, it's going to be up against it. When I came across OST, uh, it was just a very interesting time. And I just thought like, this could be, this could be a great way for us to slowly kind of ramp up uh, into using blockchain, like without kind of like risking the company on it because we're very busy. We have huge integrations. We have a small team. Um, and uh, like, but with OST, we, uh, we can slowly get there with them in line with our, with our current roadmap. So um, it's just been very interesting to, to found OST and then to start working with them. Great. So you sort of you, you don't have to shift focus uh, from away from uh, tourism, which is your, your key focus here. And you can focus on tourism and not have to uh, change your model, like you said, to become a blockchain company. Uh, exactly. And, you know, to be honest with you, like I would be very nervous in, 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 in trying to create a DAP, you know, now or, or just trying to make it all decentralized because I don't believe that, you know, the, the, the infrastructure it, um, is there yet. I think everyone can agree on that. And secondly, um, you know, like this is an iterative thing, you know, this is going to take a while. I think, I think the first uh, kind of token, uh, kind of uh, token economy that, that, that you create, like it, it mightn't work, like the, the, incent the incentives might be wrong, you know, so I wouldn't want to, like, I can, I can understand somebody now creating a new idea and having an ICO and doing a DAP because it's fresh, okay? But I, 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 the, these reverse ICOs where people are just kind of reversing the whole company and making it 100% decentralized from day one, um, you know, we would never consider that because you, you, you're, kind of, you, you're kind of throwing away a lot of the hard work you've done. But if you can ramp up to blockchain iteratively with, um, you know, a partner like OST, it, it just de-risks it for us. Um, so that's kind of why we're, we're very excited about this partnership. Great. And so you're, you're an established company, correct? You already have a, a, a base of users and you're going to implement a token economy to your existing business. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So can you tell us a little bit more of uh, what are some of your goals with creating a token economy and specifically uh, with uh, Turcoin? So, um, like it's, it's not gonna be called tour coin, but, but I mean, like tour coin is, is what we're using currently, but we'll, we'll probably have a different name for it because we have bigger ambitions than, than, than just tours. Um, but you know, we see this as a way of uh, locking in the best guides. Okay. Incentivizing the best guides, giving them some ownership, allowing them to be, um, rewarded in, in like many different ways. Okay. So, you know, if, if they get like very good reviews, they, they can basically get tokens. They can get tips via the tokens. If, if they bring it, what, what we've discovered is that, you know, if you're trying to attract the best guides, they're very difficult to, they, there's so much noise in this marketplace that, you know, they're, they're getting approached by a lot of different companies. We actually were one of the first companies to do a road trip. We actually traveled to all the cities and we met them face to face. We had big events and stuff. So first of all, they like that because no, no one ever does that, okay? Um, and what we found is that like, you know, good guides, if they trust you, would bring in their friends and uh, good guides only hang out with good guides, okay? So you, you can see here where I'm going with this, okay? So if we can create a kind of a, an economy where we can incentivize them um, to be more sticky with our platform and so then we can kind of, you know, own, like um, have, have more of their calendar because they're all freelancers, okay? 
So it's crazy, it's crazy stickiness around the guides as well. And then obviously there's huge opportunities in us on our customer side. So our customers are basically getting rewarded uh, through loyalty and bringing in you know, some of their friends to our platform as well. So we see great opportunities there. And there's also potentially in the future, the opportunity that we could reduce our, you know, our cross-border payments as well. Great. So very community and quality focused. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, what are some of the things that you're working on uh, as far as with tokenization models? What are some of the very first things that you think uh, or, or that you guys plan to go live? Is it going to be uh, re replacing a, a payment system, which you mentioned those barriers earlier, which is very interesting how each, each country deals with uh, payments differently? Uh, or is it going to be something like tipping and microtransactions? Um, so we're like, we're starting, we're starting off with some, some use cases, as you say. So for us, we can't really like, uh, like pay the guides, um, in, in, in this coin until we have, um, like the, the exchange or the, 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 opportunity for them to basically cash out to the fiat because like, this is, this is their livelihood, right? So like, you know, these guides, this is, this is, this is what they pay their rent with and pay their mortgages with. And um, so they'll be very skeptical at the beginning for us giving this coin on, unless they can cash it out, obviously. Um, but, you know, they might, they might be interested, like some could be interested that they can cash in the Ether, for example, which I know is one of the first things in the roadmap with OSD. So on the guide side, it's going to be, you know, we can't pay them, the, the, you know, what they're owed and that, but maybe we can give them tips or something initially in that. But the first thing that we're going to do is, um, is basically just incentivize the customers because um, if, you know, if a customer books a tour, we can just give them a little, a few coins as well. And they can basically redeem that against other tours. So it's, it's going to replace our, our, our loyalty scheme. And that's very easy for us to do. It's something that we can switch on quite quickly. Great. So um, what about uh, earning, uh, you mentioned, uh, to the new users? Uh, so what about the uh, tour guides? Um, is it another example giving uh, tour guides coins for referring other tour guides? Exactly. Yeah. Like, so if they, if they refer another, another guide and that guide signs, signs up and, and we accept them, um, you know, they'll be able to earn some coin as well. And, you know, so the tour guides aren't just, you know, on the, on the supply side, like they're also on the demand side, like the, these guys travel as well. And these guys want to, you know, they're, they're by nature, very curious people. So maybe they can redeem you know, that coin on a tour with another guide around the world as well. So there's a whole community of the guides that we want to kind of work on. Um, and we, like, it's very difficult to do that unless you're able to do microtransactions. And um, this, this is one of the big opportunities with OST. And we feel we have an opportunity to be one, to be one of the first companies um, in travel uh, to, to adopt this. Um, and I don't mean like from a brand new DAP, starting from fresh, but with, with the business that's worked out the world of the flows, understands how the sector works and slowly ramping up, you know, um, this kind of blockchain functionality into our ecosystem. Great. And now uh, progressing from earning uh, to spending tokens, uh, what are some of the use cases for either users or the tour guides? Uh, I think you mentioned earlier that uh, hopefully in the future, they'll be able to uh, transfer the tokens and exchange them for Ether. Um, so what about the users? Do you have something planned? Uh, something like a uh, user generated content that they can purchase with the tokens, uh, such as, uh, itineraries. Yeah. So, um, we like, we like currently we own a lot of the content. We do a lot of it in house. Um, when we first started the company, we actually had a different model. So we had, uh, external guides and suppliers coming in and kind of creating the itineraries. And, uh, we decided for various reasons to actually do, do that ourselves and to take the onus off them and make it very frictionless. So basically all, all they have to do is sign up, get vetted and basically say yes or no to experiences instead of making them do a lot of the content. So currently we, we do a lot of that. Okay. Which is, which is great because we have the control, but you know, for the scale that we want to get to, um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's probably not conducive. So we want to kind of, uh, incentivize really good quality content being created by tineries, um, we, we want some of our customers to, to add in their itineraries that, that they've done and, and like a way to kind of incentivize them to do this with quality is, is, is with the coin as well. So that, that's another thing. So you, so you can see here where we're, we're slowly like decentralizing the platform over time. So eventually we're getting, we're getting out of the way, you know, so we're allowing the customers to interact with the guides or the contents created by our community. And we're just kind of in the middle. 
So that's that's the end game. And uh, you, you mentioned growing the platform. Uh, so along with tourism, it's not only tour guides, but it's also the places they go to, whether it's the hotels or the museums. Um, what what will it take for Curiosity to partner with some of these larger uh, either hotel chains or some of the local uh, points of interest in these cities? Um, well, we, we only really kind of embarked on a kind of a B2B uh, uh, strategy of, over the last 18 months. But um, I'm pleased to say that, like, you know, we have some really uh, exciting ones coming up. We, we were talking to them about uh, what we're doing with, with our token as well. And uh, they're interested. They're interested because there's opportunities that, you know, they could use the token uh, to give to their customers, maybe to spend um, with us as well, you know. So we, we, we feel that there's, there's potential that we could bring some partners in here as well, like uh, with us. Um, so where, where is the, comp the project in terms of progress? Uh, what are some things other than the partnerships uh, that you guys uh, are working on right now or hope to release uh, in the future? Um, so we're, we're actually doing, um, so it's like, so one of, one of the big things that we're working on now is, uh, is the guide app. So we're starting, we're starting to improve, we're creating a guide app that, that makes it a lot more on demand. Um, up until now, it's kind of a, it's kind of like a mobile website where they get an email and, and they can manage their bookings in there, but we're going to create a, a native guide app. Um, we're, we're also, so currently we have a white label solution that the hotels use. So it's, it's, it's in their branding. And they can they can choose what itineraries and tours that they want to have around the hotel. Um, we're creating a widget. We're we're we're, ex we're extending our API that makes integrations into these platforms much better. Um, we're about to do uh, two pilots. Um, one with a very large, uh, I would say, uh, I would call them like like um, a travel uh, a travel kind of inspiration site, uh, but very well known across 100, 120 cities. Um, and we're kind of working with these partners, trying to work out like, you know, what's the best way for us to interact with them? Because the white label, it's, um, it's, it's a great solution, very simple turnkey, but for like the maximum conversion, you, you need to have like APIs and kind of a much better kind of seamless experience. So we're, we're expanding all of that. We are also um, now like, you know, it's a four year old platform, okay? That, that, that we've iterated a huge amount. We're now looking to kind of re re refactor it, and also with a view to bringing in the tokenization. So it's all it's 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 a, it's a very good time to be working with OSD, um, because we're looking to actually kind of uh, um, structure it for huge scale. Like like the, the the last four years has been huge amounts of learnings, but now now we're about to ramp it up in a huge way. Great, that's that's great to hear. It sounds like you guys are definitely ready to. Uh, progress the platform uh, so it's it's live now uh, not the token part but curiosity has been uh, it's a four-year-old platform and you guys are in 50 plus cities uh, so where can listeners n learn more uh, about curiosity and uh, check it out if they want to take a local tour yeah so like if you just go to our website which is at www.curiosity.com um, like that's spelled t-o-t-o-u-r-i-o-c-i-t-y -I which is quite tricky um, but like, uh, if you go there, you, you can see all our tours as well. Um, and, uh, just like, just follow us on Twitter, whatever it is. But, um, we're, we're highly engaged with, with the OST community. We're, we're following, we're following everything that that's been done. We're, we're very interested in the roadmap and we're, we're, we're actually, uh, we are very impressed with the speed so that OST is pushing out all these, uh, updates. Um, it's, 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 it's great to see and it's making us kind of, uh, we step up as well. So um, like very excited to be part of this. And we feel that in, in, in a couple of years, um, you know, that we will have been, you know, the, like the, the early adopters or something really interesting here. So very, very cool to be part of uh, the OST community at the moment. Great. You know, uh, Alex, we, we greatly appreciate having uh, you guys as a partner and, uh, you know, uh, your, your kind words here. And uh, for the listeners, I'm going to link down the links uh, to Curiosity down below. And uh, you, were you guys part of the the Alpha challenges? Yeah, we did. Yeah, we we did all of them. Yeah, yeah, we did indeed. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll, I'll link those down below as well uh, for the listeners out there. And uh, yeah, be sure to subscribe to OST Live. Uh, we're doing these weekly case studies now uh, with our partners. Uh, so we're available on iTunes, Alexa, and for those of you that are listening on the podcast version, be sure to check out the YouTube video on youtube.com forward slash OST.com. Alex, thank you for joining us on OST Live today. 
Thank you very much, Jose. Okay, have a good day.